Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today, uh, per some of your requests, I want to talk a little bit about hunting a falcon off the fist. Now, uh, the, uh, that, by definition, what I'm talking about is if you take a falcon, a large falcon, and you're walking along and you're like, go get it. Uh, maybe out of the hood, maybe take the hood off, hey, there's something. Maybe you're on horseback or camelback or could even be from a car window. But the point is, is you are saying, uh, go do a direct pursuit flight after quarry. Could be avian quarry, could be ground quarry, but that is the basics of what we're talking about. Now, I bring this up. It's actually a really good topic, and if you like this topic, let me know, and maybe I can go more into depth. I'm not currently flying any large falcons in this style of flight. Uh, normally, when people here in America are talking about flying a big falcon, the style of flight that is usually talked about is what is called the waiting on flight, which is where you have your bird, you take off the hood, and they circle up, circle up, circle up, hopefully a few thousand feet, and they're following you around, and then you flush up, you or your dogs flush up a duck, flush up a pheasant, flush up a sage grouse, and the falcon folds its wings, dives hundreds of miles an hour, and the bird that it's targeting, it hits it, and it, now that bird's probably dead, falling out of the sky, and the falcon dives back around, slows down, lands on it, or carries it to the ground, and you go picking them up. That is the waiting on style flight. It has extra steps of training above and beyond if you were taking like if you were taking a goshawk out, and you're just walking through the forest, and you're like, there's a squirrel, there's a there's a rabbit, go get it. Uh, and so it, it takes more steps of training. Uh, it's 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 incredible. It's breathtaking to do, um, but. The, the thing about this is there has been a false idea that has come about, and that is that that is the correct way to fly a large falcon. Now, when I say large falcon, I'm typically talking like, let's say, a saker falcon, um, a jeer falcon, a peregrine falcon, lanner falcon would be some of the biggies, right? I'm not talking about with other, other medium to small falcons. Uh, kestrels, I often fly off the fist directly. Merlins are their own whole bag of worms of the different styles. I've, I've flown Merlins in a cast. I've flown them off the fist. I've flown them from horseback out a car window. I've let them self hunt in multiple miles of range and just driven along with. I've trained them waiting on. So, so Merlins are a totally different thing. And Oplomato Falcons, of course, right in the middle size wise, are they the biggest of the small Falcons or the smallest of the big Falcons? Doesn't matter. Uh, Oplomatos are wackadoodle. I, they, Oplomatos and New Zealand Falcons, two close cousins, uh, are so different in their hunting styles that they, they, they really need their own video talking about it because it's so different. So I'm talking about large Falcons. Keep your mind open. Always keep your mind open to different possibilities. Respect tradition respect what has been learned over the thousands of years that falconry has been practiced and additionally be open to new thinking uh not instead of don't be like oh pff, old traditions are dumb we're doing it this way now no 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 no. you got to do both you got to respect what we've learned and then you also not instead of have to be open-minded this is very important uh as far as you're thinking if you want to have success in falconry um it, it's it's so crucial not to just dismiss the past you have the richest heritage of any animal interaction, even more than horses, okay? The husbandry and training techniques of falconry outdate anything. Working with dogs, working with cats, working with ferrets, working with horses, working with camels, it trumps it all. And so we have the ability, that gift, to lean into that rich heritage of understanding. We also should be open-minded, again, so we can keep learning and learning. But you don't have to be thinking forward to think of hunting with a large falcon in a direct flight because arguably it is possible and very likely that the first form of falconry with falcons likely developed in the Middle East flying saker falcons directly off the fist going after bustards and that is a form that is still practiced there today. So now that we know that, it's like, okay, well, maybe that's the beginning, so why do we rip on it sometimes when somebody says, oh, I'm going to train a jeer falcon. To... Now, by the way, I got to talk about this. Have I done this? Yes. I've flown saker falcons in traditional flights on, we don't have bustards in Utah, but I've hunted them on pheasants and on rabbits, jackrabbits, directly off the fist. If you're not from the United States or from North America, a jackrabbit is a type of hare. We should, we should call it a sage hare. Uh, it's a very large hare. 
we, I've done Sakers that way. I've done Jeer Falcons that way. And I've done two Peregrine Falcons that way with minimal success. And I have definitely flown Lanner Falcons on the fist, but in a slightly different way when I'll get to, that I'll get to in a second. So the idea with a Saker Falcon, and again, I haven't flown them on Bustards. I would love more than anything else on earth to someday go to the Middle East and have the chance to go fly with uh, Arabian Falconers to hunt Bustards. I, I, just to witness it in person would be incredible. It's so it's the, it's to me the most romanticized version of falconry because it might be the furthest back we go. But here's the thing about bustards. Bustards are these giant turkey-sized birds. They're strong flyers. They're strong on the ground. And when something is attacking them, they have a mixed bag of what they will do. They might just get up and like, okay, I'm gonna dodge it, dodge it, dodge it, and then go and fly away. And they're such strong flyers in level flight, a falcon might not be able to catch up depending on how well-muscled the bird is. But they also might poof up their wings like an owl to look bigger, dodge, 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 until the falcon gets frustrated, lands near him, and goes to attack, and they'll fight back. They're scrapping on the ground. Now, in the Middle East, for the, the, um, the uh, Bedouin way of life, the traditional Bedouin way of life, protein is, is priceless. I mean, it is, it is a very important thing to have. A bustard for a bird provides a lot of meat. Uh, and and it, it's something that you're willing to go after. So even though a flight with a Saker Falcon and a Bustard is incredible, it's not about how incredible it is. It was very much about a tactile way to get food. And so uh, having a Falcon that can, can, can dive, but can go in level flight and can fight on the ground, that's unique. We don't normally think in those terms today in falconry that those attributes were so valuable and necessary for human survival of obtaining food. But it is a tradition that is still carried on today. Arabian falconry hunting bustards is still an incredible part of a heritage that is alive today. So let's broaden it now. Let's talk about with all these other birds. Falcons in general, large falcons do best when they are utilizing momentum on their side. Now, whether that is number one, Okay, I'm, I'm, okay let, me, let, me, let me start over all of that. Let's say you flush something up close and you have a hawk. The closer that flush, and we've, ooh, we've flushed up a pheasant, the goshawk, nee, 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 nee. the closer it is, the more likely it is gonna catch it. Not quite so with a falcon. Falcons, if there's a little bit of distance where they can nee, 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 build up speed first, build up momentum, then they're like an unstoppable missile. They need that momentum. Now that can also be if they're going up a little ways and then have some speed, or of course the waiting on flight. We're a thousand feet up above and they go down. Any falcon that you try this with, uh, that is something you have to factor in. What are you hunting? How much range do you have? Once you get them started, do they have range to follow through without a whole lot of trees and phone poles that might cause danger, uh, barbed wire fences and horse corrals, things like that. You have to be aware of that because that could be a danger. Now there's a style in between. So we mentioned, you know, direct pursuit flights off the fist or out of the hood. It's a lot of fun. I love doing it with sakers on rabbits. Uh, and again, I've had success doing that with Jira Falcons. I'm of the opinion and many are as well, that a Jeer Falcon and a Saker Falcon are the same species, that they're just subspecies. They interbreed in the wild, and it's kind of like you have the Arctic form and the desert form, and the desert form has been at it long enough that, okay, we can classify them as separate species, but where their ranges cross, they interbreed indistinguishably. So uh, a Jeer Falcon is a more cantankerous, larger, Saker Falcon as far as their training. Uh, and so I have loved flying Jeer Falcons off the fist. I also love to train them to wait on. But if you're going after things, I, I, I set out, oh, it's been about seven years, but I, I just wanted to irritate people. And I'm like, okay, a Jeer Falcon is an expensive bird. It takes a lot of work to train them. And usually anybody who's training them is putting the work to do a waiting on flight. And I thought, oh, how funny would it be if I'm like, oh, it's a Jeer Falcon. What are you hunting with it? Jackrabbits. I just thought it would be funny, so I did. And uh, she had success, she had a great time, um, and she was hunting prey off the fist. It was great, amazing flights. But there's an in-between flight between the waiting on style and the direct pursuit flight that I like, and lanner falcons excel at this, and lanner hybrids. You do a peregrine lanner hybrid, you do a jeer lanner hybrid, a saker lanner as well. These do really good, which is uh, a, 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 a give them a tiny head start. So like, let's say you're going out and you're, you see some crows or you see some birds starting to get up, you know, maybe some partridges are starting to go, and you let the falcon go, and, and, and maybe they don't see the prey yet and they get a couple circles in, so maybe they're only 80 feet up. They're like, oh, oh, oh okay, and then they go, and they have maybe you know 60 to 80 feet of umph 
to build in. And then Lanner and Lanner hybrids have such buoyant wings that they can get up quick and then wah, 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 and can just push through. And they so it's it's a kind of a hybrid flight. I love those flights. They're so fun. And um, they work really well on partridge. They work really well, again, like if you're hunting crows, things like that. And they can work on pheasants. Like if you see a pheasant darting in and you can see it's popping up its head and it's getting ready to take off and you're heading towards it, you're like, okay, I'm going to set the falcon free already. It gets up a couple things and you charge the bushes and the pheasant comes out. And then, okay, they go for it. So it definitely works. Um, the, but again, the principle is falcons can do it, but playing to a falcon's strength is utilizing momentum. Know your falcon. Is the species you're hunting, does it have high wing loading, meaning a lot of weight for the size of its wings? Does it have low wing loading? Is it a bird that uh, that is is prone to go really low? Is it a bird that wants to go up and dive? And what prey do you have in your area? They absolutely can do it. I Peregrines are the least success I have had with it, but it was because of my choice of prey that I was going for. And honestly, I have seen videos on YouTube of people with male peregrine falcons and flying off the fist almost as good as a goshawk on uh, pheasants and is incredible. Oh, I forgot to mention too, I've done prairie falcons on jackrabbits and cottontails, uh, saker style flight, and they did very, very good at that. Um, and actually that started with a, <laughs> Uh, male prairie that just did not want to go up. I tried, it was before drones. I tried to train him with balloons, tried to train him with pigeons, tried to train him with kites, and he just did not like to go up. Sometimes he'd do it, like one out of 10 flights. And he always wanted to clip daisies and fly low. And he, I saw him starting to chase rabbits. And I said, well, let's do it. Made a rabbit lure, trained him to go after that rabbit lure, roared him well, and started pounding uh, rabbits with no problem. He did great. And it, it was just very much a Saker Falcon style flight. He was good at it. He was very large male, but he did wonderful. Flew him for several seasons that way. His name was Cowboy. So Prairie Falcons can do it too. I do know other falconers have uh, done that as well. Uh, the only one that comes to mind, I think Eric Edwards... Uh, if you look him up online, I think he's got some photos or videos also of doing that, of hunting rabbits with prairie falcons. But it's doable. Just remember, don't just do something because it's crazy and wild. If you want to actually fly a falcon off the fist instead of from a waiting on flight, think it through. Falconry. There's many long wingers who say, well, true falconry is only a waiting on flight. Everything else with hawks and eagles or level flight, it's awe stringing as something else. Uh, I view flying a large falcon from a waiting on flight, from a pitch, and having success as really the highest expression of falconry. Yeah, um, I really do. I, th I think it's so many factors have to come together and when they do, it's miraculous, it's beautiful. So I love that style of flight. So if you want to fly a falcon and you're like, okay, this waiting on style is, you know, I'd like to do it, but uh, I can't really do it, I don't have the time or whatever, I'm gonna do a, don't, don't just, don't just um, tap out and be like, sorry, I'm, I'm not going to do this style. I'm just going to do this because it's easier. Think it through. If you're going to do a wait, if you, if, you, if you have a falcon, but you want to do a pursuit flight instead, know your bird, know your species, know your hunting territory, and know the prey availability and frequency for uh, pursuit slips before you do it. Otherwise, get a hawk. Go get a golden eagle. Go get a goshawk. Go get a harris hawk. Go get a red tail. Go get a fruginus instead. Um, if you're going to do a falcon, you might as well do a falcon. Don't do this unless you think it through and plan it. And if you do, stick by it, stand up for yourself. Other falcon flyers are going to give you a hard time, but explain your reasoning. And again, there's no reason. Again, the dawn of falconry likely is Middle Eastern falconers thousands of years ago using sacred falcons in direct pursuit flight on bustards. So it's a heritage. It's part of our it's part of our history. It's not something that's crazy. So I hope you I hope this addresses some of the principle of it. Uh, if you'd like me to get more in depth on techniques of how to get them to do that, let me know in the comments uh, what specifics you would like for any follow up videos. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, happy hawking.